Hey y'all, this is Astro Dim here doing the full moon reading for September 2018. (laughs) The reason why I'm talking like that, um, I actually don't know really, but you know, it may be because of this, you know, Venusian vibes since it's Libra season now. Happy birthdays, Libras! (laughs) All the birthdays in Libra season to all the Libras. Okay, so, um, anywho... Sorry about that, I was interrupted. Anywho, let's talk about what's going on with this um, Aries full moon, okay? So, um, as you guys know, um, it's Libra season, so sun's in Libra, two degrees Libra to be exact. And then um, the moon is in two degrees Aries, okay? So, again, with the full moon, right, Um, we can see the moon brightly and fully. Um, And usually the full moon brings, like, You know, um, times where you feel a little bit um, crazy. Um, The ocean's nuts, the waves are going crazy. We, like, are feeling off and wild, and we just want to let go and let free, right? And um, the reasoning for that, astrologically, makes a lot of sense, is that our emotions are on one side of the chart, where what our identity and what we react to and what we identify with is on the other side of the chart, okay? So... Let's get deeper with this specific moon. You know, the moon here is in Aries, right? Aries is all about um, self, persona, personality, first appear- um, appearance, first impressions. It's all about self. It's self advocation and like the physical self. You get what I'm saying? Um, and especially that this um, moon is specifically in... The uh, Mars decant of Aries, and Aries is already ruled by Mars. Um, you know, this is the purest form of Aries. So we are every ounce of Aries that you can be. Um, you know, the good things such as being um, a leader, strong, determined, um, initiator, um, just a, a very um, assertive energy. But we can also be some of the negative sides, you know, which is aggressive, bossy, brute sort of a tyrant that type of energy um so we're just the purest purest form right now our emotions are at least are expressing the or feeling the purest form of aries now with um the moon being in aries in the first decade uh, we really want to focus on ourselves we want to focus on making ourselves better um changing our personality to you know fit the situation or fit our lives, changing our persona to be become better, like maybe even working on our bodies, our physical bodies, um, um, tending to our bodies. We want to focus on things that motivate us, things that um, drive us to do something, right? And just it's per- when motivation and drive is so personal, it's what we feel, what kind of ignites us, what really moves our passions, moves us to make us do something. You know what I mean? And that's what our um, emotions are. We really want to focus on bettering ourselves, um, focus on um, expressing our, um, our our passions and doing something with it. You know what I mean? Not just um, saying that, hey, I want to do this, but actually go, go ahead and doing it and initiating it and making it freaking happen. You know what I mean? That's what our emotions are. So we are very, um, very reactive, very, um, if something pops off, we're reacting to it automatically, emotionally. That's how we, that's what we're feeling. Um, we may not be, um, you know, expressing it, but how we feel is like, oh my God, if someone says something, I'm really going to burst. Will you burst? It depends on you. My, we probably won't because the sun's on the other side of Aries is in Libra. And so we were, we are actually identifying with, it's not self, but it's with relationships. We want to focus on having one-on-one relationships with others, which is totally different from what we're feeling. Um, <laughs> what we're feeling is focusing, you know, we want to focus on ourselves, um, But with the sun being here, we identify with relationships. We understand that this is cuffing season, that um, it's getting cold and we want someone to hold us while um, and make us, you know, to keep us warm. We want to relate with people just in the romantic and platonic sense. You know what I mean? Really get to know others. Um, And also uh, with Libra energy, you know, 
Libra suns um, and just Libra energy in general um, gets they get to um, understand their identity and get to understand themselves by talking to people, relating with people, building relationships because they are um, learning from the conversations that they're having with these people they are relating to, that they vibe with, with their, that they are compatible with. Um, and so they really, um, like all air signs, but definitely Libras, they really learn about themselves through conversation. You know what I mean? Um, but not just any old conversation, like a Gemini, uh, not just, uh, you know, um, conversing with big groups of people like Aquarius, but having that one-on-one relationship with someone that they really, really vibe with. Um, it's not that they're taking these people's feelings and ideas and placing it as their own, but they're taking these people's um, ideas, taking their own ideas and seeing, hmm, do I resonate with this? Should I change the way I'm thinking? They're constantly self-correcting. That's the kind of energy that Libra is. So we're actually identifying with that. So, you know, we feel and, and we're reacting to things um, by doing this. We're saying, okay, I do want to have some self-improvement and focus on self. Maybe if I kind of connect with others, I'll get better at that, that I can do that. But um, the thing is, is that your emotions, it's like, no, I want to work on this myself. I have my own passions. I have my own feelings. I am strong about them and I want to go for it. I want to go with what I, my passions feel. I don't want to be logical and talk with other people. You know, I already, I already have relationships, relationships with these folks. I already know what they are thinking. I want to do things based off my own passions. Okay. And the thing is, it's like with full moons, it's it's we're it's a release. We're trying to release something that we are, um, you know, that is like stuck on us, right? And so the thing that we need to release, believe it or not, is connected with Aries, connected with that Aries moon, emo- the, that selfish, assertive brute emotion that we tend to have. Um, we need to kind of let that go and um, focus on that. So it's tr- it's tricky. We need to focus on the Aries moon to let go of the Aries thing we need to let go. So for the rest of the Libra season, we can really uh, enjoy the Libra season and really be ready to have these relationships, to have this one-on-one connection and relationship, whether it's romantic or platonic, okay? So we still got some Aries stuff to let go and release, um, so we do need to focus on those Aries emotions to bring us over to this Libra side of being, um, of focusing on relationships and relating to others and co- being compatible and having that one-on-one relationship, okay? So, like I was saying, you know, how um, since the moon is in the air, um, the Mars decan of Aries and Aries is naturally ruled by Mars. This is the purest form of Aries. That's how our emotions are. The purest, purest form of Aries. And, you know, Aries moons naturally feel like they have to fight for their identity uh, because people always are trying to put kind of pull um control them a little bit. So they have to fight for their identity, fight for their um, own style, their personality, their persona, right? Um, and so that's how your emotions are feeling right now. But if we look over at the sun, right, the sun's in Libra. And because, you know, full moons there, you know, the, the degrees are exact, are exact to be a full moon. You know, the sun is at this purest form of Libra, too. You know what I mean? Um, the sun is um, in the Venus decan of Libra. And so the our, the what's surrounding us is this energy of yes get ready for this relationship yes you have to relate with others yes form romantic and platonic relationships to better understand who you are as a person it's not all about you all the time and you need to learn from other people as well Um, not just from yourself you know and from your own experiences and so we're being kind of forced to identify and to react to these energies because the sun, which is our main main luminary, because the sun's a luminary too. I mean, the moon's a luminary too, but the sun is the sun. It's our everything, right? They're re- the sun is strong, so it's forcing us to think in this type of way. But the moon is addressing 
those um, the situations that we have um, that we need to kind of focus on to really get into the energy of the sun for the rest of the Libra season. Um, okay, so we have some things to let go connected to ourself, our persona, our personality, and we need to let it go. It's very important. Okay. Um, but yeah, with the, um, with the sun being in two degrees Libra, you know, this whole relating with others, um, you know, really, um, focusing on beauty of relationships and beauty of people and, um, all that, like that's, it's our main focus here. Okay. And, um, you know, our emotions are not set in that. <laughs> our emotions are still being a little, um, a little bratty about like, no, I need to express myself and my passions and what I want. And I need to react to them now. I don't want to listen to anyone else, but it's important too. This is what the Libra season is all about. So those are the things that we need to release. So this is how I'm going to handle this. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do, um, for the rest of this, um, reading, for you YouTube folks, I'm going to talk about the rest of the aspects um, that the sun and moon is making and so how and how it's going to affect um, not only our month, but also, um, most importantly, this week of the full moon, right? And then um, I'm going to stop right there. And for my Patreon folks, which if you're interested in that, you can go to patreon.com slash astrodim. Um, it's only $2 a month to get these um, sun and moon readings. And if you want more from me, you can look at the tear. I'm very, very affordable. You know, what you can um, you can do is just be a patron for me. Support the kid. I do a lot of work. You're listening. Why not, right? Um, and there, what I'm going to do is talk about the aspect pattern, this T-square that this full moon is making with Saturn. Yes, honey. Okay, and kind of give you a synopsis of that. Then what I'm going to do is actually talk about the fixed stars that are connected to this full moon and how deeper um, this is, how, and how, not deeper, but how meaning more meaningful this full moon is um, in connection to relationships in ourselves. And then after that, I'll do like a quick little synopsis of, um, you know, a little horoscope if your moon is in the first and your sun is in the seventh, blah, blah, blah. And I'll go on from there, right? And I'll give you like a quick synopsis of what could happen and what areas you need to focus on when it comes to self versus relationships, okay? So um, let me get started with the rest of these aspects. And then, you know, I'll um, cut that off real quick and then talk a little bit more about, um, you know, the rest of the stuff, okay? So um, the rest of the aspects, um, the one that I'm seeing first is, um, the moon is conjunct Chiron, but opposite the sun, right? And so the reason why, right, we are feeling these, um, hectic emotions about feeling, um, that we need to express our passions and go ahead and attack, um, what we're trying to, um, you know, achieve in our lives. And we're being so, so aggressive and assertive and um forward and um reactionary and we're just initiating but based off our um our passions you know we're just being so um a little brute if you will the reason why we're feeling this emotionally is because of chiron um chiron is in um you know zero degrees it's going to be at least in zero degrees um aries um so again a very very potent Aries, right? Because um, it's in the Mars decan of Aries, and with this uh, aspect, right, um, or placement actually, um, Chiron and Aries is connected to our childhood traumas, specifically dealing with how we were ridiculed by our personality, persona, appearance, first first impressions, whatever, our outly our outwardly look. Um, in general, right? How we were ridiculed about that and how it affected us, how it affected our drive, how it affected our motivation, um, and so on and so forth, right? So, so honestly, the reason why we're reacting the way that we're reacting, how our emotions are feeling the way they are is because it's deeply, deeply, deeply connected to our childhood traumas. We felt like we could not be ourselves. 
we felt like we could not put on the mask that we wanted to put on, have the persona that we wanted to have, um, have the appearance that we wanted to. And now we, we're we we're tired. We're pissed off. And we're like, you know what? Listen, I'm just going to do me and I don't care by any means necessary. The issue is, though, is this this season, you know, the sun, what's around us is connected to relationships that, yeah, you can do what you want, but you also need to be logical about it and see how it's going to affect the one on one relationships that is in your life that are around you. You can't just do things because you want them to. It's good to be passionate. It's good to go for what you want. It's good to be driven and motivated, but you have to. Think about other people and how it may affect them, especially the people that you have that one-on-one great relationship with. Because your seventh house is not just your romantic partner. It's your best friend. It's um, your, it's your um, business partner. It's that person that, you can, that you're cool with, that you are compatible with, that you can vibe with, um, that's always there for you. You know what I mean? Um, that can really understand your mind and don't mind sharing um, their minds with you and vice versa. And so if you're just doing what you want and not regarding them, that's fucked up. And that's not of the energy. That's not of this season. Tis the season, right? (laughs) So, you know, that's just, you know, we are just feeling really, really antsy and motivated to follow our passions but it's really self-serving. It's really selfish. And depending on what house Chiron and the moon is, you'll know where you're being selfish at at the moment. Okay? And I understand, like, again, this is connected to your childhood, past, like your past, your childhood traumas. This Whatever this is, it's really affected you deeply. It really hurt you. Um, and now you feel like you need to bust out, right? Um, you have every right to attack these situations and address these situations right now but just know all you have is this week all you have is what the 21st to 22nd to 23rd right and then the moon full moon's 24th 25th 26th and 27th after that it's done after like late night the 28th it's done it's done. You you can't anymore. Okay. You really have to focus on relationships. So go ahead, go ahead, get all that energy out, address that energy. But then after that, you you have to focus on relationships and the the one on one relationships you have with people around you, and you have to start being considerate. And it's not like don't for, you know, forget your motivations and drive. Uh, it's just completely. You know what I mean? But you can't just, that can't just be your main focus. You have to learn the balance. That's what, what opposites are all about. Balancing, balancing your, you know, the, your self-serving ways, which is okay to be selfish, right? And then balancing you considering others, the, the special people within your life, um, considering what other people feel too, okay? I had to give you that speech real quick. I get it. I get it. This Chiron and Aries is tough. I understand, but you know, you have to think of others too, okay? Um, the moon will also be opposite Mercury, um, but the Mer- Mercury is going to be conjunct the sun, right? So uh, with, the Mer- with this placement, it's interesting. So again, um, Mercury is all about like details, um, routine, but also communication and um, really like um, your thought process and really getting to learn what other people have to offer, right? And so, you know, this um, energy that's around us right now is really sweet, honestly, because um, what it's all about is really getting to have a meeting of the minds with the people that we're having relationships with, really getting to know them, really learning them, learning what they have to offer to you and to the people in our lives um, and just, you know, vice versa, right? And, um, you know, identifying with them, really identifying with the relationship, um, letting them be a part of your everyday routine and everyday life, you know, so sweet, really cute. But again, you know, Mercury is opposite the moon. So your mind, right? Your mind is actually thinking about relationships. You're talking relationships, right? But deep down inside, you're like, no, but I want to focus on myself. I want to focus on myself and my own, my, my own thing. I need to work out this passion I have. I need to initiate 
this these emotions I have. Um, I have to break out because people keep trying to put their thumb over me. You're kind of seeing that, you know, um, if you don't do this, then this relationship is literally going to um, try to like push you down and your 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 um, passions won't be addressed and you won't be able to do anything it's not doing that you're just learning to balance it all you know y'all y'all had y'all season aries moon energy you know what i mean like we had the season to like focus on self already that was aries season now we need to switch it over you know what i mean and learn how to balance it all it's really really important okay um and um, again, it's funny because it's like you're reacting like, yeah, I'm, oh, I'm for the relationships. I'm with it. I'm I'm for it. But deep down inside, you're like, but I need to heal my own self. I need to worry about my own emotions and how it's connected to myself and personality and my persona and what I want to improve in my physical body and all this stuff. Like I have all these other things I need to address. I need to heal myself from my childhood traumas, you know, so you're like saying one thing but feeling another you need to address that because you're gonna end up going crazy that that's why people act like lunatics during a full moon because they're feeling one way but feel like they have to react another you know um and then um the moon and um and sun is actually sex telling sa- i mean excuse me not sex telling squaring saturn in both directions which is really really interesting um so, you know, we're, all, we're talking about cardinal signs here, right? Aries, Libra, and Saturn. Um, excuse me, Aries, Libra, and Capricorn because the Saturn is in Capricorn. All in twos, too. And I'll get into more detail with that later. But overall, with that energy, it's kind of like um, you are feeling that you want to focus on, you know, just your personal self you know what I mean you don't really care about you know um you don't care about like specifically your emotions and your family and your and and your like your ancestry and all that stuff you don't really want to focus on that you don't really want to focus on relationships you don't want to focus on your career status reputation you feel like I need to work on my literal self like just me only me my persona my personality my appearance me i don't care about how i affect others (laughs) i need to focus on myself right that's how you are feeling deep down inside and you need to address that okay you have all you have all week to do it but the thing is is that saturn which represents you know what we need to take authority of it's like okay you still need to take authority of your career your status your your reputation you got work to do you know what i mean you're still being restricted here and you need to stand up and then um you know with this um sun the sun is um opposite libra and i already talked about that you know you're focusing on relationships right now um you need to at least you need to be focusing on relating with people and connecting with people to get what you need to get to at life right and it's funny because you're actually identifying with that um and you're acting you're you're not yeah kind of you're kind of like reacting like that and acting like yeah relationships relating with people connecting with people yeah cool I'm, i'm with that but again like you you want to do it like Libra energy is kind of like yeah I want to relate and connect with people to learn to have fun to help myself to um, just be in a relationship because it's cool right but Saturn's like yeah but you have some work to do still because it's in Capricorn so, you know you still got to focus on your career your um, reputation your status what you want out of your life the scandals in your life how people see you you need to focus on that you know your actual reputation and how you represent yourself not for the you know you yeah it's cool to focus on yourself yeah it's cool to be in relationships but you need to have a goal you know Capricorn is all about initiating things practically with a goal in mind not to just initiate things for selfish reasons or initiate things because it feels good and you're learning about it and it's cool you need a goal you know what I mean so that's kind of like the weird energy that's happening and i'm going to get a little bit more into that when um later in the video um if you're a patron 
um, about how that's actually going to be affecting us for real, for real, okay? Um, moon is also trine, um, north node, but it is sextile the sun. Um, but I mean, excuse me, but the sun is sextile the north node, excuse me. Um, so with that energy, it's quite interesting because, um, you know, North Node is currently focused, is a little so, sort of a selfish energy in the sense of um, they want to create, they want to be self-expressive. Uh, but the thing is, it's not it's not fully selfish because um, they want to create for others. They are the truly are the entertainer. Um, yes, um, the their creations is of them. Um, and they are selfish in a sense of, listen, this is what I'm creating. This is what I'm channeling, what I'm letting you see. And you need to look at what I'm doing so you can get entertained. <laughs> so you can get what is needed um, out of my creativity, my natural, awesome creativity. Right. <laughs> and, um, you know, the interesting thing is that this this moon it's it's it doesn't care about entertaining folks <laughs> it's again it's focused on themselves and so you know the energies are flowing well because um you know it's it's all geared on passion it's all cared about geared on self expression but there still is a little bit of um disagreement here the north node though with the North Node um, trining the moon, it's actually, even though they kind of express the fire energy differently, and it's not really disagreeing, they just express the fire energy, um, you know, differently. Um, the thing is here is that this is actually a really good placement because North Node is what your path is supposed to be, what you need to focus on, right? And... Of you know, this kind of pushes this energy of Aries being selfish even more because it's like, see, I'm following my path, I'm focusing on myself and what I need to do, right? Um, uh, but the thing is, though, is that like the sun is the sun and the seasons of the sun, right? When it hit it hit each sign, it's telling us what we actually do need to focus on, where what we do need to illuminate in our lives, right? And in all though. Um, North Node is talent saying like, yes, focus on your passions and your creativity and all that. Um, you know, the, where the sun is at is truly where what we need to illuminate in our lives, what we need to focus on, honestly. But the great thing is because North Node is so powerful and definitely a faded type of energy, it's saying and it's actually pushing more that it's you're not letting go of your passions and yourself and what you need what you want to focus on personally by connecting with others and relating with others you know what i mean so you don't need to fight you don't need to fight for yourself to have to have an understanding of self to be yourself you don't have to fight north node is actually supporting your emotions on wanting to focus on self but you need to know learn how to balance them both you get what I'm saying? And the thing is, which, what is lovely is that North Node actually is sextile the sun, which kind of is making this um, this this full moon not as harsh. Because um, if it wasn't, it would definitely be way harsh. <laughs> but what this um, what it's doing, though, is honestly, um, it's kind of being the um, in between or the middleman of the sun and the moon and saying like, OK. Um, I understand you want to like focus on yourself. Um, you're really passionate and um, passionate on focusing on the things that you're motivated and driven by. But hey, let some see that maybe you know if you relate with others, have um, built relationship with others, maybe they can help you with that thing that you want to focus on. That's that's connected to your personal self, connected to your persona and personality and appearance and how you want to change it to become better. You know what I mean? So it's kind of being that in-between person trying to pull the two energies together so they can understand each other. And that's what sextile energy is all about. It's about uh, two elements, right? Um, and of two different modalities coming, with, coming in, in di um, different perspectives, but understanding each other and learning from each other. And that's why I love sextile energy so much. It's so dope. So, um, you know... 
North Node kind of like is understanding the energy of the moon um, and bringing it over to the sun so the sun could be like, okay, well, I can help you with this, you know? So that's why it's really, really important for us to address these selfish or self-focused energies that we're feeling deep inside. So these relationships that we're going to be forced to build anyway, because the sun is in Libra, <laughs> so they can actually, like, these relationships can help us. Relating to these other folks can help us to, to those self um, focus things that we want to focus on and want to improve you get what i'm saying um next aspect um which is not too far from the other one is the moon um is sextile south node um and then um south node is trying the sun okay so um <laughs> remember I, um, I sent a tweet out i don't know if all y'all gonna see it or not if all y'all follow me on twitter if you don't you should try it's i m m i d d i m m i imid dimmy pretty much and um the funny thing is is that i was saying this is like this is pre- prepping us for the soul our soulmate right um and this can't this position can't stress it even more listen to this um so South node trine and sun, um, you know, the sun, again, is telling us the focus um, of the month or the focus of the season, what we need to actually focus on this season, right? Which is relationships, relating to others, connecting with others, being compatible, meeting, have a meaning of the minds, vibing with people, right? South node is trying this. South node represents karmic, um, karmic lessons, karmic things that anything that's connected to our p- karmic past. So, sun being in Libra of relationships, south node trying in it in Aquarius, this is connected to our soulmate. Whether the soulmate is ro- um, rom- ah, romantic, romantic or platonic, um, you know, this trying is saying that if we focus, right, on relationships wholeheartedly, not just fake focus, like you're thinking it, you're speaking it. Um, You're being logical about it. You're identifying with it. You're reacting to it. But you have to believe it in your your gut, your 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 emotions, your heart. Right? If we wholeheartedly focus on relationships and relating with people and vibing with people and being compatible with people, right? It's going to lead us to our karmic partner, our spiritual partner, our soulmate from a karmic past that we need to connect with this life. All right. With with South Node being in Aquarius, this is focused too on um, our network, our friends, people around us. But also, um, Aquarius is connected to astrology, yes, <laughs> but it is connected to our wildest dreams, uh, what we all our wishes. You know what I mean? And so, I can see it as you would get in the karmic person of your wildest dreams right you're getting um the wish of being in a certain type of relationship right and you're doing it through a um, a karmic person if there's someone in your network a friend that you've been wanting to get with your wildest dreams are about to come true or um again this is like romantic and platonic keep that in mind um or right um Maybe you're like a more of a humanitarian and want to help society, help um, big groups of people or something like that. You're going to meet with the person that you're supposed to to help you with that. Uh, With Mars connected here, it definitely brings motivation and drive um, to this karmic person um, and to, um, you know, the whole idea of relating to this person. But if this is romantic, right, (laughs) you know, Mars represents sex. So this is connected with that, too. All right. So this is like this full moon, y'all. Y'all don't even know. Like this is going to really connect us to um, our soulmates, the person that we've connected with in the past already, in, in our past lives, in our karmic past. The thing is, though, is that south node is sextile the moon right and so again remember how i said how the north node is the in-between man trying to get us in the right right mind you know um south node is like nigga like (laughs) 
Can you get your stop being selfish and meet this person so you can get your wildest dreams? You know, like self node is trying to nudge your emotions. Like remember your karmic past. Have this soul recognition. You're missing out. Get out of yourself. You know, and it's saying it in the most loving, understanding way. You know, because self node again, it's it's. Yeah, it's a different element. Yeah, it's a different um, modality. But Aquarius and Aries get each other. Believe it or not, they have a different perspective, but they agree with each other. And so, you know, in the most loving, sweetest way, both Mars and South Node is trying to tell um, the moon, like, yo, like, you're going to miss out. You know, you're, you're going to miss out. And you're, you know, you need to be a little bit more motivated and driven to um, focus on your motivation and drives that's that's you know self focus um but also balance it <laughs> balance it and focus on relating with people and relationships because it's going to give you honestly your wildest dreams it's going to um, give you that relationship that you want um is going to connect you to the thing that you're driven to in the first place because that's the funny thing is that the moon is in Aries which is Mars um focus um and then it's also in the mars decant of aries but mars is in aquarius mars is not even thinking about self right now it's thinking about the bigger picture (laughs) the bigger um conscious picture you know so you have to look within your network to connect with this um karmic person and have a really um strengthen the relationship to get your wildest dreams whether it's a romantic wild dream, platonic wild dream, financial wild dream, whatever, career, whatever, okay? Just 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 work out these um these emotions. Kind of try to work it out as much as you can. <laughs> work it all out as much as you can. Address these feelings that you're having. And and the thing is with the moon being so close to Chiron, it's connected to some childhood trauma that you had. Try to think back to see why you're reacting this way, why you feel like you are um, being pushed and um, forced to conform, right? The, just because, you know, the, the, the energy is to be more focused on, um, you know, relationships right now and other people, it's not, they're not forcing you to conform, the thing is about Libra is Libra is about relating, right? Relating is not conforming. Relating is understanding both perspectives and learning from them. You have to understand that on an emotional level in order to get all this good shit. Okay? Please, please get it. Please get it, y'all. And so I already pretty much talked about moon, um, sextile, and Mars, and Mars trying in the sun with just that little talk. But again, like, Come on, don't miss out, y'all, please. <laughs> I don't want y'all to miss out, okay? Um, but yeah, so what I'm going to do is cut this off right here um, for, for the free folk. If you want to support me, it's only $2 a month, y'all. Only $2 a month. You can get the rest of this video in which I talk about the aspect pattern this um, full moon is making, this, this T-square. I'll talk about it more in depth. I also talk about the fixed stars and how they kind of even give us more detail about the sun and the moon right now. And I'll talk about as well um, the, um, you know, depending on where the sun and moon is in, in your chart, what you need to specifically focus on, how this relates to you in your life specifically. Okay. So with all that being said, I'm going to say to the Lou, to the folks who um, are listening on YouTube or whatever. Um, and what's up to my patrons?